Besides early video game magazines like Nintendo Power, there were really only a few ways to see all the newest video games, and one was to go to the arcade. If your town didn't have a video arcade, you could probably find a cabinet or two at your local pizza hut, grocery store, or even maybe a roller skating arena. Enter the Dragon, Double Dragon, one of the grandfathers of the beat-em-up genre. Double Dragon came to pizza joints and arcades in 1987. Released by Technos, the game was an instant hit. Players take on the role of Billy, or his twin brother Jimmy, fighting to rescue Billy's girlfriend Marion, who has been abducted by the evil Black Warriors gang. Few arcade ports on the NES were as popular as Double Dragon, and I would imagine if you were born after, say, 1985, that the NES version was the only version of Double Dragon that you knew. Heck, you might not even know that the arcade game existed. Double Dragon was almost as synonymous with the NES as games like Super Mario Bros., Tetris, and Tecmo Super Bowl. Like many arcade games such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Arcade Game, NARC, and Operation Wolf, these late 1980s games saw releases for home consoles. And while the NES was quite capable of handling older ports such as Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, later games had to be totally redesigned to play on the system, often resulting in a much different version of the game. Double Dragon was certainly one of these games. The NES version follows the same plotline as the arcade game, but the look and feel make for a completely different experience, which was disappointing to me as a kid to finally get Double Dragon in my home, only to realize it wasn't THE Double Dragon that I knew and loved. Probably the biggest difference is that the NES version is only one player. Wait, doesn't that make it single dragon? Sure, you can play two players alternating, but whoever thought that was fun? Also, Billy only starts the game being able to punch and kick. As you make your way through the game, he learns how to throw elbows, jump kick, and plenty of other moves. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe you might want to learn how to at least throw an uppercut before you take on an evil crime syndicate. While the arcade version had multiple 8-bit chips running parallel that gave it its almost 16-bit kind of look, the NES version certainly does look and feel like a regular 8-bit game. They did get the sound right, however, as the music is one of the highlights of the NES version of Double Dragon. The NES game also throws in way too much bad platforming for a beat-em-up game. The cave mission alone can ruin your game since you only have two lives and no continues. While the arcade version of Double Dragon is extremely fast-paced, to the point where it suffers from an almost crippling slowdown at points, the NES game is really slow. Only three characters ever appear on the screen at the same time, including yourself, plus most of the time you can just stand still and wait for the enemies to come to you, where in the arcade version it's usually a good strategy to throw a lot of punches because of their speed. Kick is your friend in the NES game, since well-timed kicks usually mean the enemies can't reach you. The game's also full of places where you can avoid fighting enemies altogether. Throw them off a cliff, kick them over a ledge to their doom, it really makes some of the boss fights seem almost pointless. Double Dragon also missed a few opportunities to be a truly great beat-em-up because of the developer's inexperience with the NES. While all the weapons from the arcade game are here, the knife, the baseball bat, the whip, the weapons disappear after you progress. The weirdest part of this game to me was that there are several places where you have to go into an entrance like these. If you don't, you start at the beginning of the stage all over again. Hmm, this looks familiar. Another huge difference is that the arcade game made the players actually fight each other over Marion's affection after they defeated the final boss together. Spoiler alert, well, since the NES version's only one player, you simply have to fight your brother Jimmy at the end who's controlled by the computer. A Ninja Gaiden style cutscene here would have added an epic element to this battle since Jimmy's never mentioned in the game before this and he just comes off as another basic enemy. Well, maybe I'm being a little bit too hard on Double Dragon, it really isn't all bad. Only a handful of beat em up style games even exist on the NES and the best of that group such as River City Ransom and Mighty Final Fight they can be really hard to find, and they can set you back a whole lot of money. While I definitely think some of the more popular games on the NES of the time are best left in the past, I'm not ready to say that about Double Dragon. Sure, it doesn't have the replayability of the Mega Man series today, but it can still provide some fun entertainment for the game's value, which is only around 10 bucks. 
To answer the question though, was Double Dragon really that good? I have to say no, it really wasn't. It probably wasn't even that good at the time. But the series had to start somewhere for home consoles, and this was it. So go ahead and put on the nostalgia glasses for an hour. You won't have to try too hard to have a good time. Well, that's all for today, and the Game Vault would like to thank you for watching.